Hey gang, welcome back to Rails New. This is a beginner focused series on how to build real applications with Ruby on Rails. In the last video, we saw just how fast Rails can spin up a web application. With just a few commands, we had a working project, a database, and even a nice looking Tailwind UI without writing a single line of code. But like I said in the previous video, I wanna show you how these commands work, break them down step by step, and build something together. So today, we're gonna make a new application, and together, we're gonna learn about how Rails does all of its magic under the hood. By the end of this video, we are going to have a fully functional to-do application, a complete CRUD interface, which stands for create, read, update, and delete, a working database, and a web server, all with just a few commands. So let's dive right in. The first thing we have to do is create our new Rails app. So let's open up our terminal and run Rails new doable. This is a to-do app, by the way. And so I think doable is a fun little name for it. Okay, so what's happening here? You see, Rails is creating all of the files and folders we need for our application, and it's going to give us a great base to work from. So once that's done, let's cd into our directory, doable, and open our editor. Now, Rails is an MVC web framework, which stands for Model, View, and Controller. And the Rails new command sets up all of the things we need to achieve a Model, View, and Controller system. Let's check out some of the files. I'm going to only focus on just a few of the more important ones to start off with. In the app Directory. This is the heart of our Rails application. Most of the work happens within here. You can see we have models. This is the M in MVC. These are the classes that will really closely interact with our database and sort of define the structure of the database. We also have views. This is the V in MVC. In our views, we define the files that will actually display the results to the end user. And then of course, we also have controllers. Now controllers are where a lot of the logic happens to fetch the data that we then display with our views. Now in the config directory, this is where all the configuration happens with Rails. And the file that I wanna focus on for now is our routes file. This is how Rails knows how to handle the requests coming into the application. But don't worry, we're gonna talk about this in more detail very soon. And then also I just really wanna quickly point out our gem file. We spoke about this before, but our gem file basically defines all of the packages that we want for our web application. And we can see here that the Rails new command gave us all of the gems that we need to get started with our new app. Okay, so now let's go back to our terminal and run Rails S. This is the server command to run our web server. If we run Rails S and then go to our browser, we type localhost 3000, boom, we got it. It's a web server. Our app already has a working server. Okay, now let's start building stuff. Now this is a to-do app, so of course we're gonna need a way to create, edit, and delete our to-dos. But here's something really cool. Instead of having to build everything manually, Rails has a tool that does the heavy lifting for us. Let's go ahead and show that off. Now I'm gonna open up a new tab on my terminal, and I'm gonna run Rails Generate Scaffold To-Do, which is the name of the thing we want to make. I'm going to give it a couple properties, a name, which is a string, and a description, which is a text field. Okay, hold on, cowboy. What exactly does this do? You see, this does a lot of different things. Here, let me show you a super scientific diagram to explain. In our scaffold command, Rails is going to generate a lot of things for us, namely a to-do model, which again, we talked about was the class that sort of structures how we access our database for the to-do object. It will also generate views for our to-dos, and it'll also generate a controller. Now, this is the MVC structure that we've talked about before. Now, on top of that, it's going to generate a migration file. Now, don't don't worry, we're gonna talk about that very soon. And it will edit our routes configuration so that we now have a way to handle requests for these to-dos that we are going to be building. Okay, got it? Great, let's run it. Okay, and we're all done. You can just go ahead and pat yourselves on the back and call it a day. All right, just kidding. We're gonna dive into this a little bit more, but first, this should now give us access to the to-dos route. So let's go into our browser and type to-dos at the end of our URL for localhost 3000. I hit enter and, Oh no, I have my first bug? What is this? Well, you see, this is an error message and Rails is fantastic at giving us great descriptive error messages. And you can see here that it's saying our migrations are pending and to resolve this issue, we need to run bin rails db migrate. Okay, great, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our terminal and run bin rails db migrate. Perfect. So now we have migrated our database and this should fix our problem. Okay, but 
what the heck does DB migrate do and what is a migration file? Well, we can go back to our diagram and we can see here that our migration file is one of the things that Rails Scaffold will generate for us when we're building out a new resource. So let's check out our migration file here. Let's go back to our editor and we can now scroll down into our DB directory and click on migrate and we see we have a new migration file. Now we can see in this file, we're going to create a table called to do's in our database. And this table will have a couple of columns columns, a name, which is a string, and a description, which is a text field. Now this is exactly what we put into the command line when we scaffolded a new to-do resource. We specified that we wanted name, which was a string, and a description for our to-dos, which is a text field. So this is what our migration file is doing for us. And you might notice there's a huge string at the beginning of our migration file. What does that mean? Well, migration files are kind of like version control for our database. Anyone can open up our project, run db migrate and it should keep our database perfectly in sync structure wise with everyone else. So everyone will be on the same page and as long as they run Rails DB migrate, their database will automatically match our latest version. So what we see at the beginning of this file is actually a timestamp that Rails adds to migration files so that we can track when they are created. And we can also see that since we have run this migration, we now have a new file called schema.rb. And this is the file that details the structure of our database. We now have a table called to do's with these attributes inside of it. Also, if you want, we can actually query our database and see what's going on. Now, Rails by default uses a database called SQLite. Now, SQLite is a library that stores a database in a file on your system. So we can actually CD into the storage directory and we can see that we have a development.sqlite3 database file. So if we type SQLite3 development, SQLite 3, we are now in our database. We can type dot schema and we can see here that we have a to do's table in our database. Now we can see that Rails has created a migration file that sets the structure of our database and that database is now also represented in the actual database itself. We have a new table called to-dos. Great. So now we can actually go back to our fancy little diagram and check off migration file because we just covered it. Great. Now we're going to cover everything else. Let's keep moving. So now we can go back to our application, reload the page, and great, we now have a to-dos section of our application. We can click on new to-do, create a new to-do. Let's call it clean the garage. My wife's always asking me to do this. And the description is um, do this now, pretty please. I can create this to-do. I could edit it if I want to, update it, go to my to-dos index page, and also delete the to-do. Yep, gone forever. But how does Rails magically know how to handle all of these different requests? Well, the answer is routing. And what do you know? In our diagram here, that is another box that we are going to check off right now. So let's go back to our editor and open our config routes file. We can see right here that under the config directory, we have routes. Now there's a new line in this file. On line number two, we see that Rails has added resources to do's. What is this? You see this one line creates multiple paths for creating, displaying, updating, and deleting to do's. And actually, if we wanna see all of the routes that are created by this line, we can go to our terminal into our project directory and type bin slash rails space routes. Now I made my terminal font a little bit smaller here so we can see exactly what's going on. So let's hit enter and we can see amongst many other routes that Rails gives us, we have a section for our to-dos routes. We can see here that in to-dos, if somebody makes a get request to the to-dos endpoint, it goes to to-dos index. Now index is an action in the to-dos controller. That is what this string means. Don't worry, we're going to cover that very soon. If we make a post request to the to-dos endpoint, it'll create a new to-do. And on top of that, it allows all of the other things you'll want to do with a CRUD resource. CRUD again stands for create, read, update, and delete. We can create a new to-do. We can edit one, which is the update part of CRUD. We can get a to-do and show that single resource, and we can also delete to-dos. Now that is what resources to-dos gives us. It gives us all of these routes and all of these ways that our app can now handle these actions on the to-dos resource. So now we can go back to our fancy diagram and check off routes. Nice. We've covered routes. Yes. Okay, so now we understand how some of these routes are working, but how do we actually display this data as a web page to the end user? Well, that's where we can talk about our views, controllers, 
and the model. So let's start off with to-do's index. We learned from our routing that when somebody puts a get request on the to-do's endpoint, we hit the to-do's index controller action. So let's go up to our controllers directory and click on to-do's controller. So now we see we are in our to-do's controller and we want to scroll down to our index action. Now in our index action, we can see that we set an instance variable called to-do's to to-do dot all. Okay what's going on here now like i mentioned before we created a model called to do and that model is the thing that we use to interact with our database now if we go into our models section of the app directory we see we have a to do model and our model class from to do inherits from application record and if we go to application record we can see that it inherits from active record base active record base is a class that consists of many different methods that you can use to access data from the database base on behalf of that class. So for to do's, when we set an instance variable in our controller called at to do's, we're calling to do dot all. So now let's go to our terminal and we can type bin slash rails C. This will open up our rails console, which is an amazing tool for inspecting certain parts of your application. We can type to do dot all like we have in our controller here. And we can see that it returns an empty array. That's because there are actually no to do's in our database right now. So we set an instance variable of to do's dues to this array or essentially a relation of records coming from the to do dot all call. Okay, so now we can see how the controller uses the model to actually fetch data from our database. How does the user see this in a web page? Well, that's where we go to our views directory. We can see in views, we have a to do's folder and within to do's, we see we have our index. What's cool is that rails by default will name our views based on the actions in the controller. So the index action has a corresponding index view. And we can see here in our index view, we take our instance variable of to do's, we loop over each one of them and we display some kind of information. Now, long story short, when you call render to do, it actually renders this partial here. And we can see this is how we get our to do dot name and our to do dot description displayed on the web page for all of us to see. So now let's experiment a little bit with this and see how it works. We can open up our web browser and click on new to do and give it a name. Let's just call this name of to do and we can give it a description. This is a description. Cool. Now, if we create this to do before we do anything else, let's go back to our rails console and type to do dot all. Wow. Now we have an active record relation of to do's. Currently there's only one to do in this relation, but now you can see that is how our controller fetches to do's with to do dot all. It returns a relation of to do's. Cool. Now this is all making a little more sense. So now if we click back to to do's, we see that we are now in our to do's index view. This is what we're seeing from this view right here. In index.html, we have an H1 tag of to do's and for each to do, we loop over them and show some information about it. Very cool. Now let's go back to our fancy diagram and what do you know? We actually talked about our controller, our model and our views. What do you know? Three sections done just like that. That's pretty cool. Now to explain everything we just did, I actually made another fancy little diagram right up here. So now let's just go through this flow really quickly. A user requests something of the server. It goes through our routing file, which again, Rails added resources to do's. And from that routing file, it finds the appropriate controller action. Then the controller, as we saw before, typically will fetch data to display in a view. And then once the controller has the data, the view can display it to the end user. This is the typical flow for an MVC application. And this is exactly what Ruby on Rails gave us with this scaffold command. So let's take a second to appreciate what just happened. You see, we started with an empty terminal, no models, no routes, no database, but now we have a fully functioning Rails application with real data, as we saw, real functionality, and a clear understanding of how it all fits together. This is Rails in action. It's fast, it's convention driven, and it's ready for whatever you want to build. Okay, so now we have to-dos. In the next video, we're going to add to our application a new concept called projects, but this time we're gonna do things a little bit differently. You see, we are going to build our new projects feature completely by hand, so you can see how Rails conventions, the ones we showed off in this video, work from the inside out. We will actually write our controller, we will build our views, we're going to define our routes, and we're going to wire everything together ourselves. We're going to learn more deeply how Rails expects things to be structured and why that structure makes sense for building apps faster and easier. So stick around and hey, 
Thanks, nerds. Thanks.